Hi, my name is Robert Duff. I'm the author of the Hardcore Self-Help series, and I blog over at duffthepsych.com slash blog. This is a mostly verbatim reading of my blog post, Should I Major in Psychology? This is for people that uh, don't feel like reading or can't read it for some reason, so I'd like to have an audio version for you. And here we go. So it's called, Should I Major in Psychology? This post started off as an email from a fan out there who is interested in learning more about the field of psychology. She had questions about what you can do with a bachelor's degree in psychology, whether you need an advanced degree in psychology, and whether it would be smart to double major. I break down each question one by one, so enjoy. If you're in a similar position and have more questions, please feel free to leave me a comment. Question one, would it be beneficial for me to have something over a traditional four-year college education, like grad school? If you're interested in going into the field of psychology in terms of clinical work, it would definitely be beneficial. In fact, there are not many positions that involve direct contact with clients in the field of psychology that don't at least require a master's degree. The field is very protective of the people that it serves, so there are a lot of rules and regulations about the kind of work that you can do. That being said, there are a few psychology-related jobs that you can take part in without an advanced degree. When I was in college, I worked as a behavioral specialist for children with autism. In general, you don't need an, an advanced degree to do direct behavioral treatment with people who have developmental disabilities. You can also work in places like Homes for the Elderly and participate in planning activities or supporting the residents. Psychology is also a great back pocket degree for applying to jobs in a variety of fields. You gain a better understanding of what makes people tick as well as strong working knowledge of research, statistics, etc. This makes you a great candidate for many different positions. Question two, what schools around the Pennsylvania area would be good to look at for a major in psych? There are a zillion schools in the area that have psychology programs. The great thing about psychology is that you don't necessarily have to get your degree from a super famous research one institution to be successful. Personally, I went from a super competitive magnet high school to a very small liberal arts university in a city that no one has heard of. It didn't hurt me at all. In fact, I owe a lot of the student that I have become to things that I learned at that university, and I was able to get into a very competitive UC for graduate school. The best way to learn about programs at the universities around you would be to go and check them out for yourself. Here's a list of schools to get you started. Question three, how difficult would it be to find a job in this field for a counseling position of some sort? Like I said above, it's difficult to find any sort of counseling position without an advanced degree. You can work in the field in various ways, but to provide real counseling or psychotherapy, you need a higher degree. You can find related experiences while you are in college if you are a peer advisor or something like that at your school, but nothing formal. Once you get a higher degree, it's not entirely difficult to find a job in the field, but there are a few hoops to jump through before you can work independently. You need to get supervised hours under somebody who has a license to provide therapy. That being said, once you start a training program, you'll soon be immersed in clinical work while you are completing your degree. Sometimes these experiences are paid and sometimes they are not. Question four. What steps did you take to come to the specific type of psychologist that you are? This is a good question because it points out one of the technicalities in the field. Technically, you can't call yourself a psychologist if you don't have your doctorate and are not licensed. I'm currently in my fifth and final year of graduate school. I have a master's and will soon be getting my PhD. Therefore, at the moment, I am a therapist, but not a psychologist. That will happen when I finish my hours and get my license. Anyways, the type of psychologist that I will soon be is called a clinical psychologist. There are different types of psychologists, including counseling, clinical, school, industrial, experimental, etc. Clinical psychologists can do therapy, psychological testing, research, or teach in a university setting. I started off in, a college, in college as a psychology major. I got my BS, which is Bachelor's of Science, instead of BA, which is Bachelor's of Arts. That enabled me to get a little more science experience while I got my psychology degree. I also did a clinical emphasis, which, of, which was available at my school. Then I went directly into a PhD program straight out of undergraduate school. Some people go into a master's degree program or even take some time off first, but I just wanted to keep pushing through. In my PhD program, which is a combined clinical counseling and school psychology program, I got my master's degree after two years and I'm now finishing up the PhD. Question five, 
On average, what is a typical starting salary for a newly graduated psych major? You know, I haven't the slightest idea about this. For undergraduate psychology grads, there is probably a ton of variability in the types of work that people go into. Here is one analysis that I found online. Question 6. Do you think it's smart to have a business major backup for just insurance when graduated from college, meaning I would double major? It really depends on what you want to do. Business and psychology probably don't have too many classes that are overlapping unless you decide to go more of an industrial psychology route. That means that it would take a lot of effort on your part to make sure that you get the requirements met for both degrees. However, it definitely wouldn't hurt your resume to have both qualifications. If you're thinking about going into a field like human resources, that combination would make you an awesome candidate. Uh, question 7? I'm losing count here, sorry. <laughs> would it be beneficial to do a study abroad at some point in the education? Yes, that is the case for everyone. There are just some experiences that you can't beat, and one of those is going to another country and experiencing life there. It helps you to become a more well-rounded person and can give you a better perspective on things. But I never studied abroad. I felt a little too pressured academically to be gone for an extended period of time. I sometimes regret it, though. I have been a professional student for a long time, and I feel like I may have missed out on some really amazing experiences by not studying abroad. My answer to this question will always be yes. Do it. Next question. Are there any books that you can point me in the direction of that can give me a better scope about how I could use this degree or higher to the fullest? Yes, I really benefited from some books throughout my academic journey. They change frequently year to year, but I will look and find some that I think will be helpful to you. Um, then I put a link to Insider's Guide to Psychology Major. In my experience, a lot of books with Insider's Guide in the title have been super helpful. This book is no exception. It's packed with practical and straightforward knowledge about the degree. It probably explains all this stuff way better than I have been. And then I link to what psychology majors could and should be doing. This one is cool because it talks about what you should be looking out for and how you can best spend your time while you're in an undergraduate program. This is something that a lot of books leave out and also things that you tend to learn by trial and error. I really wish I had this book when I started out my journey in psychology. Next question, if I decide to get a master's degree or higher in my education, what would be the basic requirements? Basically, you would need to get your undergraduate degree with a decent GPA. Then you would need to get letters of recommendation from your professors that feel confident in your ability to pursue the degree. Oftentimes, you also need to take the GRE, which is basically like the graduate school version of the SAT. It sucks. Finally, if it's possible, it is always very attractive to have some research experience. If your school does active research, this experience might be working in ongoing research labs. You might also have the opportunity to set up your own research project and present it at a conference. These things would allow you to be considered by graduate programs. And then I link a book called The Insider's Guide to Programs in Clinical and Counseling Psychology. This book was one of the best investments that I've ever made and told me everything that I need to know about graduate programs in psychology and how to get there. And final question, is there anything that you would like to tell me or any other prospective psych major that I forgot to ask? You are already ahead of the game by asking these questions. It's a very rewarding field because you get to directly make a difference in the lives of people that you work with. You can't beat that. It's also a field that has many hoops to jump through, and there isn't as big of a direct payout when, you're, when compared to the medical field. It's definitely a labor of love, but I wouldn't give it up for the world. So these were some great questions. If any of you have additional questions or if anything was unclear, feel free to leave a comment. All right, so that was a blog post. Again, that was, um, should I be a, should I major in psychology? And that's available at deafthepsych.com slash psychmajor. And I'll see you for the next post.